Hey, what is going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Hope you're having a fantastic end to your year of 2018. In today's video, we are going to talk about the very exciting topic of memory leaks inside of our iOS applications. And more importantly, we are going to discuss how we can use the instruments tool to help us easily detect our retain cycle memory leaks. Okay, so having said all of that, how exactly do we use this tool right here to actually tell if we have a memory leak, sort of like what you're seeing right here in the red, right? Well, let me kind of give you a demo by clicking the back button here, clicking the show red back here, show red and back here. And then after a certain amount of time, I think it's about 10 seconds, you'll see a memory leak show up inside of this profiler tool right over here. And you can actually click on it to display the frame of all of the elements inside of your application. And the most important thing to do here is to kind of look through this entire list. And I know that the only code that is kind of custom to my application is this red controller right here, which is this guy, our red controller. And on the right side, you can sort of look at the stack trace where the memory leak is actually occurring right over here inside of handle show red and this initializer function right over here. Okay, so by the end of today's lesson, we are going to figure out how to use instruments right here to actually tell if we have a memory leak inside of our application. And then we're also going to discuss how exactly we break these retain cycle memory leaks inside of our apps. All right, so hopefully that sounds good. We are going to go ahead and create a demo application inside of Xcode right now just to reproduce this effect here. So why don't I show you exactly how to create an exciting single view app like this inside of Xcode. And we'll just call this, let's see, retain cycle instruments like so. Hit the next, save this somewhere inside of your computer, obviously. And here we go, we have our application loaded up. And uh, the first thing I would like to do is to run this guy inside of the simulator just so that we can see our beautiful, beautiful white screen. And uh, here we go, everything looks good. Here is our view controller right here. Let me close this just to get some extra space to work with. And the first thing you have to do before you actually talk about, you know, how to detect retain cycles inside of instruments right over here. Uh, the first thing you have to realize is what exactly is a retain cycle and how do you produce it inside of your application? Well, let me show you how this works by creating a controller down here first. So, you know, let me show you how to create a retain cycle down here. And I'm going to create a very simple uh, view controller that is going to subclass, let's see, UI table, so table, view controller. And let's just say view did load and super view did load. And we'll make the table views background color equal to this red color right over here. All right, so pretty awesome stuff. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to rerun my application. You'll still see your white screen. And I would like to present some kind of navigation bar up here so that I can show this red controller very similar to this application over here. So I need, I need a nav bar currently inside of my application. Uh, one of the easiest ways of doing this is to go inside of your app delegate inside of this did finish launching with options. We are going to set up window equals UI navigation controller with the root view controller of our template controller called view controller like so. Now all this is going to do is to help you create a application with the root view controller of nav controller like so. And it provides your app with a nav bar at the very top there. So let's kind of see it in action. And here we go, we have our nav bar. And the thing I would like to do inside of my nav bar is to put a button on the top right corner. So this is pretty easy. Just type navigation item dot right bar item equals UI bar button item. And you know, just make a very simple title of show red. This guy, the style will be plain. The target is self and the selector is going to be called handle show red controller. All right, so we're going to see this later on show up inside of the screen over here whenever we detect our memory leak, but you know, nothing is happening right now. This is pretty standard code. We are going to define our 
function right there. And uh, the last thing we need to do is to actually push this red controller onto the navigation controller stack. So that's rather easy if you've done this before. And we're going to create our red controller animation at true. And we're just going to push it on top of the nav controller. And it's going to slide from the right to the left, like so. So right to the left. And you know you also get access to the back button right here that allows you to show your original controller. Okay, so that's pretty good. That's the initial setup for our view controller and a red controller. And what I'd like to do now is to show you how you can create a routine cycle somewhere inside of this red controller over here. And the easiest way to detect whether or not you have a routine cycle is to make sure you override this d init function and just simply type in something like print an OS reclaiming red controller like so. So red controller and memory for red controller. So whenever this print statement is being printed out down below, it means that you don't have a retain cycle. So in other words, when you hit the show red and you hit the back here, this print statement is being printed out, right? So OS reclaiming memory for red controller and everything is behaving exactly how it's supposed to behave. Nothing is holding onto the memory of this red controller. That's why it's able to deinitialize successfully. Okay, so that's all that is. Make sure to use this deinitializer to help you detect memory leaks. Now I'm going to go ahead and create our retain cycle by using a third class up here. And typically you'll have some kind of service class that you know maybe helps you fetch data from the internet. And one way to create a retain cycle is to create a variable right here. And let's say our variable is called red controller and let it be of type red controller and also make an optional like so. And what you can do is inside of your red controller, this class right here, let's say we create an instance of the service class using service equals service like so. And then finally on our service right here, we're going to set this red controller variable up to be self and we're going to run this application uh, run this application again you'll see that every time i dismiss this red controller right over here using the back button the print statement down here it's supposed to print out os reclaiming memory for red controller but you don't see anything down in the console below right and so that means that there's actually a retain cycle and inside of this little back button right here Every time it's trying to reclaim the memory for a red controller, it's not able to do so because service is holding onto a reference to that red controller. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. Let me help you kind of easier understand that by drawing a diagram here with this little tool. So let's say I have two objects, right? One over here and one over here. And let's say this is the red controller, this is the service. Well, red controller actually holds a reference to the service over here. And then the service also holds a reference to red controller. And as you can see, there is a cycle of references and that's kind of why we call it a retain cycle. Both of these objects are retaining a reference to each other, All right? So hopefully this diagram helps. I really like using this tool. Let me kind of get rid of it like that and that. And let's move this guy out of the way. And so the question that you might be having now is how exactly do I get rid of this routine cycle, right? Well, you can simply declare this guy as a weak var red controller. And once you run your application again and you go through the same process of dismissing the red controller, so show red, dismiss red, you'll see your print statement now being printed out. And the reason why this works is because by default, all of your variables are strong references, which means that it's going to bump up the routine counter for the red controller. And when it tries to uh, deallocate the red controller later on this dismiss right here, if it's a strong reference, then the routine counter is going to be uh, bumped up by one. And so it's not able to successfully deallocate that memory. 
However, when you make it a weak variable, then the retain counter uh, doesn't increase, so that's why it's able to reclaim that memory. Okay, so that's kind of how the weak variable is supposed to be implemented inside of your application. Make sure you are aware of that. And now, why don't we get to the interesting part of running the instruments tool right here to actually help you de uh, detect your retain cycle memory leaks. And this is actually pretty easy once you get the hang of using this tool. Uh, all you have to do is to go inside of your Xcode application right here. So I removed the weak and now our retain cycle is back. Let me just prove that to you again. By running our code, I'm not going to see this print statement here. So show red and back. We don't see the print statement down below, hence our retain cycle. And if you want to use instruments to help you detect that, you want to hit a product inside of Xcode and profile. And once you have the profile, you are going to get instruments to hopefully pop up right here. And you know, down below, you have a lot of different options to actually pick from. Uh, the one that you're probably going to use the most is I believe allocation and leaks. So we're going to double click on leaks here. And now that you have this tool up, you want to hit the record or, you know, the start mode recording button over on the, on the top left corner. We're going to hit that. It's going to launch the application. And right at the beginning, you're not really doing anything. So the application is just going to be fine. You see these green check marks, right? And let's just wait for another green check mark just to confirm that our application is doing all right. We'll either get a gray or a green there. And so everything is okay. Let's make sure to produce the retain cycle a couple of times here. So that's about three or four retain cycles. And after a brief moment in time, you'll see this red six new leaks show up just like that. I believe we have one memory leak for the service and one memory leak for the red controller. And because we did that three times, we have six new leaks. Okay, so that sounds good. If you click on this guy right here, I notice that sometimes you don't get the stack trace to appear. So that's a little unfortunate, but basically the stack trace will, you know, sometimes show you exactly what to look for on the right side. So that looks a little bit strange. So I guess I'll use this as the demonstration. On the right side right here, you can kind of see handle show red is what is causing our memory leak to appear. So if you can get this to show up, the stack trace on the right side is really, really helpful. Let me try to see if I can reproduce the stack trace right here. Once you hit the stop button, for whatever reason, the stack trace is now showing up all the way on the right side. So you see we have show a red controller and we have the initialization or the allocation of that red controller. So if you're not familiar with what a stack trace is, is basically all of the different levels of functions you're calling within your application to produce the actual effect inside of your app. You can kind of think of it that way. And that's kind of how you use instruments right over here. So pretty cool stuff. Hopefully you found this helpful. Alrighty, everybody, that's gonna wrap it up for today's lesson on the fabulous technique of detecting memory leaks using the instruments profile tool. If you enjoyed today's video, make sure to leave a thumbs up and also consider subscribing to the channel. If you want to learn more about Swift development in general, make sure to check out the couple of courses in the description below. Hope you guys enjoyed the rest of your year of 2018, and also hope you guys enjoyed the beginning of the new year of 2019. That's going to be it for me. I will see you in the new year. Bye-bye, guys.